Welcome, welcome everyone to this special second episode of uh, Shit Island Talks About Shit. More specifically, Shitty Democratic Candidates. Part 2. Yep, welcome back people. Welcome back to this coverage of the Democratic candidates, which are all pretty <laughs> awful. Uh, almost oh, yeah. all of them. There's like two decent-ish ones, hopefully. Maybe three, yeah. we'll see. In, I think in, in episode three is going to be the one when we talk about the candidates that we actually kind of like. Yes. Not this episode. <laughs> yeah, we still have the, the Betos and the Klobuchars and the Yangs and the, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The Harrises and the Gillibrands. We, we got them all this uh, time. And as yeah. such, we're drinking tonight because fuck us. This is, this is going to be a rough one. So, strap in, folks. Strap in, indeed. Who wants to it's start? It's going to be a, a journey. <laughs> indeed. Like it, it really is a, a roller coaster. Reading about these like third way, uh, moderate Democrats because it's like, oh, that's kind of neat, and oh shit, he's like a fucking ultra libertarian. It's like, oh, he supports Palestine. That's nice. Oh, he wants to remove all taxes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> That's how my uh, thing, well, no, spoilers, I got Gillibrand here. It started off good, and then, like, oh, uh, no, no, oh, God. It, it, it went downhill very fast. It started good, and then I was like, oh, no. The American relationship to Israel has always been interesting, because you the, the conventional logic has always kind of been, or at least since the 70s, that you couldn't be a president in America without supporting the current system of support for Israel. But the current support for Israel is so weird and so strange and unique in the way that, like, they they give is they have a, an exclusive agreement with Israel that they'll keep supporting them if they give them money to buy only American weapons. So basically, the American yeah. government gives Israel money to buy weapons from America. It's the worst deal of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very roundabout way of just giving you know, your weapons uh, industry a subsidy. Yeah, it's the most expensive yeah. welfare pro uh, program in the world. <laughs> Uh, Do you know how so, much a tank costs? Uh, I've never bought one, so no. Like a hundred dollars between uh, that guess... and and like a what what like a million, two million dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, people, listen up here. Support the Patreon, and we can get a shit <laughs> island tank. Jules wants a tank, people. Indeed, I do. Jules wants to become an actual tanky. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck it. Make me a tanky. Our, our army general is officially tankies now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, uh, who wants to start with our candidate? I can start. Okay, well, there's someone who's excited to start. <laughs> I can Go start uh, with the kind of emblematic candidate of the fringe candidates, the guy who is famous for losing to Ted Cruz, Beta Beto. Oh, Beto Beta Beto. Beta Beto. Oh, I like it. Yeah, Beta the Beto. ultimate. Fuck yeah. The ultimate look at me candidate. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be fun. All right. <laughs> he's the guy who he's he's basically hired all of Obama and Hillary's staff from their elections hoping that um Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's any stuff I would like to hire, it's Hillary's stuff. I mean, now that will turn out well. <laughs> a real a real winning team. Don't change a thing. You know they say in sports that you should always surround yourself with winners. Well, mm -hmm. Beto sure picked a bunch of winners going after oh, the yeah. Hillary campaign, and uh, it shows in the in the polls. He's <laughs> leading the pack. Um, if you ask people everywhere in America, they go, "You know who I like? That Beto guy." Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. No. No. Not at all. <laughs> Do you want to hear something interesting about Beto that sure. I know? He has three children, right? Okay. Um, his wife is named Amy. Mm -hmm. He has one. One uh, son named Henry, and then one daughter named Molly, and then another child that I don't know the gender of named Ulysses. Oh, God. oh yes, fuck. He, he's a big uh, Greek mythology fan or whatever. Is that, Interesting. What, fuck, I can't That's remember. the worst what, thing he's ever Beto, done. Is that Beto or is that Pete Buddy, <laughs> the Mayor Pete? I think one, one of them, was, I think it was Beto who was really big into like Greek mythology and likes to show off with it. I would be more inclined to think that's uh, Buttigieg because it could he's... be both, really. It could be both. <laughs> Buttigieg is kind of the whiz kid, annoying nerd from your class who spoke sixteen languages and and well, only spoke honestly, Klingon with his friends. 
Honestly, that also describes better, in my opinion. They both have that same vibe going on. I you think. know what? I agree. I disagree. Sorry, I ah, disagree okay. with that. Maybe I, I have not looked into <clears throat> better, so I'm just going by appearances here and what no, I've no. seen from them. No, so no. Beto, Beto is the cool me. kid. <laughs> okay. Beto is the cool kid of the pack. He's the guy who hangs out behind the school smoking cigarettes uh, oh, well, of a uh, Democrat high. He's hmm. he's the guy wearing a, a leather jacket. He, he used to be in a punk pop band. And he used to skateboard, and he's very proud of this, and will mention it any chance he gets. <laughs> he is the ultimate Generation X presidential candidate. He has no real policy, he has no real opinions about anything, really, to speak of. But he's very openly hip, and, like, oh, okay. listened to R.E.M. when he was young, and, like, likes to show off and, like... Um, name his kids Ulysses, that kind of stuff. Well, I stand yeah. corrected. I'm sorry, Beta Beto. I... Yeah. Feel free to come on the podcast and correct me in more detail. He's he's just a soulless neoliberal, essentially, like all of the Generation <laughs> X Democrats. I, I don't think he's going to come on the yeah. podcast anymore with that kind of attitude, Peter. <laughs> well, you know, I, I would much rather have someone interesting on the podcast than Beto. See, Beto is the ultimate. He, he doesn't have any philosophy of anything, it seems like. He's just like, I, I, I used to skateboard and I was in a band once. That's the yeah. guy. Yeah. And he really, really wants to be president. That's the thing. He really wants to be president. Uh, I, I think it was um, a Politico who suggested that uh, people inside of his campaign against Ted Cruz said that um, uh, Beto was actually really happy that he lost against Ted Cruz because it meant that he got to run for president this year. Uh, so, <clears throat> God. He kind of used uh, this campaign against Ted Cruz as him launching a campaign for president in a lot of ways. That's, yeah, yeah. I don't like that. That's bad. Man. Yeah. I will give him credit. Like, they can burn, like, I mean, the Texas Democrats, that was not really a thing before he came along. And he really stamped an infrastructure out of the ground. So, yay. And then he bins off and did this bullshit. And I'm like, yeah, go fuck yourself better. Well, I mean, I, Texas I liked you better is, when you were stuck in Texas. <laughs> Texas is a, is a complex state. In, a, in Europe, oh, yeah. we kind of, we look at Texas as this broadly, very rural, deserty place where everyone votes Republican and shoots guns and each eats big steaks because of pop culture but really yeah. it's a huge state and you have some very big metropolitan areas that have always been left wing or voted left wing of the yeah, republican party true. and especially in houston and, and austin they have some very big progressive centers who if if you look yeah. back over the last 30 years texas has always voted like 53 percent republican like it's not the it's not the, the the republican state that people like to make it out to be but yes, Beto definitely did bring some enthusiasm to yeah. this idea that it is possible to turn Texas blue. But Which I would argue good. that it, he, uh, it really wasn't his doing no, as much as it was this enough. narrative in the media that there was going to be this blue wave, which made especially young people who protested climate change and gun control stand up and say, we will take any Democrat over these Republicans. So I think, Fair you know, the media, the, the media narrative has definitely been that Beto moved a lot but ultimately i think what we should take away is that he lost against ted cruz the guy who literally everyone hates that's fair I, I, i'm not as harsh i think i will give him a little bit of credit that he has he did use that energy in an effective way i think that's i don't about think as far so. as okay well fair <laughs> enough that's, that's my read on the situation but you've looked into this guy i haven't so that's fair i mean he is he's a very uninspiring candidate in all uh, aspects. If you look into his actual policies, he's a very middle of the road centrist Democrat. He, oh, he yeah, scores very moderately well. on on most issues. He doesn't really take any hard stances, and uh, he he's voted with Trump thirty percent of the time in in this current Congress. So he's mm -hmm. not he's not known for being yeah. this kind of ideologue fighting against the oh, establishment no, or anything not, like that. No. Uh, people who are listening, please don't confuse my very mild praise of the guy from when he was still in Texas <laughs> as support for the guy and his policies, uh, you know. Yeah, no, we don't support any of the people we're going to talk about <laughs> well, this episode. I, I have some mild support for one of my people. It's very mild, but uh, okay. I, I kind of like the guy, although I don't like what he's doing recently. Interesting. We'll see. Well, I don't, I don't want to take up... point something out? Yes, yeah, of course. No spoilers, about, no spoilers. Uh, Wait, what's Beto? Can I point something oh, out about Beto? please do. According to opensecrets.org, mm -hmm. um, which uh, the data of which is used on votesmarch.org mm -hmm. to check 
funding and how much different candidates have raised. Better O'Rourke has raised eighty million dollars. Oh yeah, that's quite a bit. That's again the connection to the Obama and Hillary campaign. He has a lot of very powerful people backing him, but I think they're all kind of leaving ship or abandoning ship at the moment because yeah, um, he's polling terribly. He's not as popular as a lot of people predicted. But again, like, don't listen to political analysts or pundits because, like, ultimately, all this stuff, especially with American presidential elections, it's a lot more like uh, economics and astrology than like real science. It's all oh, guesswork. No, oh, oh, mm. Hang on, hang on. I mean, don't <laughs> listen to the other pundits. Listen to us. <laughs> oh my God, are we pundits? I guess well, we are. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, we are now. So yeah, listen to us instead. Don't listen to what the fucking New York Times has said. New York Times are a bunch of fucking wankers. <laughs> no, shit islands. The shit island times. That's where it's at. We should do a financial yes. podcast on the side. <laughs> just at the same time. As oh, like, you know where the smart money is? The smart money is on Microsoft. Mm, yes, I mm-hmm. agree. <laughs> Put all your money in Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, who's next? <laughs> who's next? Uh, are you done, Yes, Peter? I think that's all I have on Beto. Don't vote for Beto. Okay. <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> if it wasn't clear already, we don't <laughs> endorse Beto. <laughs> Beto, Beto. We do, however, endorse John Delaney. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's our guy. Delaney. Oh, yeah. John, John Delaney looks like if Colin Mockery was a sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> look up a picture of him, okay. look him up, and tell me he does not look like exactly John like if Colin Mockery Delaney. was a sex offender. Who's Colin Mockery? Oh, Jesus. He's the uh, whose line is it anyway guy. Oh. The bald guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see where you're getting the vibe. Yeah, he looks v- like a creepy uncle. He does. He does. He also looks like that uncle that lost two hundred pounds in a year. <laughs> Are you talking about Subway Jarrett or? Uh... No, just any uncle that lost a lot of weight very rapidly and his body doesn't keep up. Ah, right. I mm. see. Fair enough. <laughs> but he looks friendly. So John Delaney. Yeah. What's with uh, old Jenny boy? John Delaney is uh, one of those moderate Democrats. He's fiscally conservative and socially liberal in all the fucking talking points that people talk about, the the Democrats talk about. Mm-hmm. The women's rights, LGBT rights, and drugs, and gun control, all that stuff. He's, you know, very standard cookie-cutter Democrat. Which is an interesting choice in the current political climate, but sure. Old people love him. That's nice. I don't know what who his main demographics are. No one. Knows. Eighty-five to eighty-nine-year-old uh, white women. <laughs> People who know his name. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I think the only the only things that I can find that are interesting about him are his um, government reform ideas. Oh dear. So one idea that he had was to create the a tradition where the president would debate with the um with congress in the same way that the prime minister in the uk does like once a week the president would like go to congress and sit down and take questions like prime minister questions in the uk pretty much exactly yeah, okay. i'm kind of all in favor of that because in a, I, I can only imagine how america would would just <laughs> ramp that up to 11 that would be interesting yeah <laughs> that wouldn't be funny imagine yeah. if trump had to sit there and i was so like questions of I don't know like Sanders and Warren and whatnot. That's gonna he's be basically fun. he's basically suggesting a TV show. That's what <laughs> he's pitching yeah, a show. That is what it will I'm become. Down. Yeah, that sounds cool. Like take PMQs and turn it American. You have this fucking reality show. Oh, uh, need need the voiceover as well. Vote for me. Oh, I'll yeah, bring back like friends. Commentators. And... Watch after the break as <laughs> Trump has to answer his new policy proposals on the border wall and how yeah. Senator Warren grills him on it. That's exactly the what it would become. Music. <laughs> like, Trump oh, would yeah. low-key love that, though. He would, he oh, would yeah. love oh, that. That's a dancer, yeah, he probably would. He, he, could, he could act out his apprentice shtick and kind of be all like, Pelosi, <laughs> you're weak. <laughs> Pelosi, you're fired. Uh. He's like, you can't fire the Speaker of the House. You're fired anyway. I would watch the hell out of that. Just give Trump that a throne. He'd do it. Well, I, I, he would do it, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so he's in favor of term limits. 
for Congress. Uh, I'm not in favor of that. He supported actually. some reforms uh, in regards to gerrymandering. I do uh, like he that. He introduced, mm. yeah, gerrymandering is a problem. Not a lot of candidates seem to talk about gerrymandering. Yeah, that's which true. is interesting. Um, he introduced the Open Our Democracy Act, which would make Election Day a federal holiday. Nice. Which I think is a bit like you could just have Election Day on a Sunday. Oh but no, 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 no! They're no, gonna no, have, have a, the election day on the weekday, I mean, and then turn the weekday into holiday. It's like, well, look, fucking... okay, yeah, sure, a weekend might make more sense, but I'm not gonna be against a free public holiday. I mean, come on. <laughs> sure, you could stay at yeah, home. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If you wanted to. Fuck yeah. But yeah, no. Um, the fact that election day is not a holiday in the US is a it, just a massive oversight. Yeah, it is a bit. It may be, it may, maybe it's not even an oversight. Maybe it's supposed to be the way to keep working class people well, there uh, is that. unable to jo- work. It's not actually a holiday here either, but here you Not here keeping, either. It's very easy it's to on vote Sundays here. here. It's always on a Sunday. Uh, it's a, during it's the not here. as well, but it's also extremely easy to vote. Like, we had uh, EU elections the other day, and it took me yeah. literally, I think, four minutes to get out of my house, vote, and come back. It was. Yeah. Uh, that's about generally how easy it is. It took me about 15 minutes. Our national election is on a holiday this time, and that's the first time in many decades it's been on a holiday. Yeah, well, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Our Constitution Day. Mmm, you have a Constitution? Oh, fun. Do we have a Constitution? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know if the Dutch have one. I'm not an American. (laughs) Americans care about their Constitution. Uh, We might have one. I don't know. Things seem to sort of work-ish. Political Everybody. analyst Jules, does my country <laughs> have a constitution? I don't know. I don't know. People in the audience, get back to me on that. Does the Netherlands have a constitution? Send us an email and tell us if the Netherlands has a constitution. Yeah, I, I'd like to know. <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. D- John Delaney. Delaney. Fuck, that guy, yes. Is there anything more to say? <laughs> Well, if we look at his uh, funding... Oh, what's there? Uh, so John Delaney is a multimillionaire. Mm. He's uh, pretty much entirely self-funded. He has raised uh, $18 million, and I think about 15 of those million are raised by himself. Hmm. And the rest come from finance, insurance, real estate, construction, health, lawyers and lobbyists, transportation... So your basic democratic uh, donors, essentially. I, I guess so, man. <laughs> well, agriculture, building, construction—that stuff. That's all very actually, traditional Democrats. There's a few this cycle who, who are like, you know, I'm you know fucking rich. I can self-fund and whatnot. Uh, what do you yeah. think about that? There are some like Bernie is one of them who's like, I'm not gonna take any corporate money. I don't know which ones have done that, but a few have. The thing is, I mean, I I don't believe any of them, the people who've come out against big money, uh, except for Bernie, maybe. I think they all would take the money. I just think they're not getting any anyway, and they're kind of just going. Mm. Uh, I am. This is a principal thing for me. I'm, yeah, I, 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 I you am. Yeah. You know how that. much money I get offered every day? Oh my god! I don't want oh, any yeah, of sure. it. Sure. Yeah, I can see them being like, okay, well. I'm- Barely going to get any money from them anyway. But if I say yeah. that I'm not going to take any money, that's at least going to look good. Exactly. Than, I know. mean, Trump did the yeah. same thing in 2016 when he was first when he first announced he was running. He was pre- basically financing the whole thing himself, and he said, "I'm not taking any corporate money. I'm sponsoring this all by myself." And as soon as he became the yeah. front runner and he, he started getting offers, he took all the money. Oh yeah. <laughs> just it's just like yeah. I mean, a campaign is expensive, you know. Obama did the same thing in 2008 and 12. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's when you're popular and those money offers start coming, a lot of money. all those principles go by the wayside. Yeah. yeah. Except for Bernie's case, which is interesting. Yeah, but, you know, where you don't have money, co- well, actually, what fucking big ass corporation is going to sponsor Bernie? Well, if you look at Bernie's uh, funding history, not that we should be talking to Bernie in this oh, episode, no, we should be talking about it in the next episode, we're but just briefly. Here. <clears throat> Just briefly, 75.55% of all his contributions come from small individual contributions, uh, less than $200. Mm-hmm. And that amounts to $8,910,652. Hmm. It's a lot of, like, small, yeah. under $200 donations. Basically, not a lot of big company uh, is giving money to Bernie, uh, is what I'm getting here. 
Yeah, no, he gets a lot of money from individual uh, universities unions. and unions. Uh, uh, okay. A lot of unions actually yeah. are giving him money. Yeah, it's really, it's really yeah. cool how he's. It, it, it really is a different kind of campaign, but he's still getting that that sweet dough. So he's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's a different way of campaigning, and I admire the way he's doing it. No, oh, yeah, it's good. I know a lot of people yeah. are trying to copy it and not as successful. Yeah, they just they, they don't have that's the thing they don't have any policies or convictions so people yeah. don't support them. Now that's a nice segue mm. into my candidate if uh, Ooh. we want to move to the next one. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, no. in uh, that case, please. someone who's you know suddenly not taking corporate money anymore and has not have has well, hasn't had the strongest convictions, Kristen Gillibrand or Kirsten Gillibrand, have you say it? The New York senator who. Uh, it's not great, in my opinion. But yeah, she uh, has recently said, I, I think it was her, I'm fairly certain it was her, and now I'm no longer going to take any corporate PAC money. And kind of wondering, was she getting any money? I don't know. Is she, uh, is she the one that... No, I might be confusing her with another fucking blonde Democrat. She is indeed blonde and a Democrat, so you're yeah. on the right is way. Is she the one who came out as bisexual and was like the first bisexual? That was uh, Cinema, Cinema from so, uh, okay. uh, Arizona who won the Senate seat. Ah, but yeah. Okay. Well, no, that's, Never mind. Uh, that's her. But uh, she has been decent, uh, at least over like the last few years on like LGBT right? So yeah, he hasn't been mm -hmm. way back when, but that's you now going back fifteen years. So I don't want to get too much on the case about that. Uh, fucking fifteen years ago. I have a lot of thoughts about your candidate right here. <laughs> oh yeah, no, mm -hmm. there's there's definitely stuff to go into here. Like, uh, let's see. Like, okay, so. In like the last two years or so, she's been jumping more on like the Sanders bandwagon in a few instances of like you know Medicare for all and uh, some yeah. uh, employee-owned business stuff and whatnot. So that's nice. Um, on the other hand, she very much seems like it's just like I'm gonna do this because I know that like my base wants me to do this, and otherwise I'm just not gonna have any chance at all. But if I can. Yeah. Do what the corporations want. I'm definitely gonna fucking do that because <laughs> if you yeah. cover out of history, like, there's very much a like. She's what's the word? She's a grifter. <laughs> That's basically what she is. Yes. And particularly, that becomes very obvious when you know, it's like on foreign policy because that's where she's absolutely horrendous. Because okay, so let's start going way back when to uh, nine eleven. She uh, was in favor of like supporting uh, uh, habeas corpus, so you know you need to have proof of wrongdoing basically for uh, suspected terrorists. You can't just lock them up or whatnot. And mm -hmm. she, but she also supports that uh, the Patriot Act and wants to you know, extend it and whatnot, which is uh, not great uh, for those unfamiliar with the Patriot Act. It uh, sort of led to a lot of like mass surveillance shit. It's not great. Kind of also. Not very, I call it. Um, it doesn't line up well with the whole habeas corpus thing. Let's put it that way. Mm. And she also wants to close Guantanamo Bay, but on the other hand, doesn't want the people there to actually be tried in a federal court. I don't know what they're supposed to do with them, but uh, <laughs> just send them back, <sighs> dump them in the river. Yeah, okay, so... I'm sure plenty of Republicans would support that, just like... <laughs> well, yeah, ocean, probably. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as for the rest of her foreign policy, it just gets worse. Like, it's the one good thing. She supports getting rid of the travel ban to Cuba. And it's all downhill from here. And that's, uh, I mean, that's good, but it could be better. Yeah, and uh, as I pointed out before we started recording... The travel ban is like the least problematic part of the yeah. embargo against Cuba. It's like all the travel ban does is forbid Americans to visit Cuba. Which is still like, stupid, but it's not. There's a bigger picture here. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not something that she's doing for the sake of Cuba or the Cuban people. No. It's definitely for the American tourists exactly. who want to go there. Uh, when you look at the rest of the things, okay, she supported military actions in Iraq, Syria, and Libya, and. Like some, uh, a great track I record. think series recently has like 2015 or something. That's not like 10 years, 15 years ago. That's you now a couple of years back. So I'm going to get on a case about that. She also supports sanctions against Iran. And I think still does. And also 
sanctions against Venezuela as of this year and recognizes fucking Guaido as the uh, current president. So, uh, oh, yeah. I'm sure a few of our candidates. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, do. but still, like, yeah, I'm just trying to point out his yeah, foreign policy kind of shit, kind of fucking garbage. Yeah. We should start suggesting that there's two people in the Senate uh, using her name, one called Kristen Gillibrand and the other called Kirsten Gillibrand, <laughs> because she is the ultimate split personality Democrat oh, yeah. when it comes to her uh, uh, track record and, and what she's saying right now. I mean, yeah, she was very much. one of the, if not the most right wing Democrats until Me Too started happening. And she decided, oh, maybe this president thing would be fun. Yeah, I think just like she saw the success of Sanders and was like, well, I got to get in on that. But I think um, it's bigger than that because she, okay, so she, uh, without hijacking your segment, oh, no, she's, go for it. she's from up, she, she ran for office from upstate New York, mm -hmm. which is, you know how in the, in the case of Texas, you have, like I said, these very. Yeah, yeah metropolitan progressive yeah, areas. New York is very conservative. It's very conservative. Yes, it oh, is. Yes. And um, it's it's basically like Texas, but with woods and deer um, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of guns. Yeah. And it's like, and like she ran a lot of um, a lot of states that people think of as democratic are like that, like the yeah, city. Yeah, areas actually, I just want to touch on that for a moment, because uh, if, if you go for a record, a lot of like her very conservative positions were when she was like a representative from upstate, and as soon as she became a senator, she sounded like ah, actually no, yeah, no, she, she, right. she course cool. corrected. We need gun control, actually, everyone. Like before she went to the Senate, <laughs> she said like a hundred percent rating with the NRA, and then as soon as she went with, with the Senate, it's like oh no, no, we need gun control. There's very much, there's not a lot of principle here. It's just like, eh, what's going to get me elected here? Yeah, <laughs> essentially, when she entered the political stage, she entered as a candidate that the Democrats found, which was way right wing. Like, they were looking for someone yeah. who could uh, hijack Republican voters from these uh, hillbillies oh, yeah. up north in New York. And uh, as soon as she be, and, and she needed to say these things to get their support. But that's actually kind of, if you look back in her history, all the stuff she believes. She is like a First Amendment freedom of speech uh, person from a very young age up until a couple of years ago when she became Kirsten Gillibrand or Kristen <laughs> or whatever, when she became the other person yeah. and yeah. the Me Too thing happened because everything changed for her. First, when she became a senator and decided, okay, I'm going to be a centrist. And then when the Me Too wave started happening and she decided, I'm going to get in on this Me Too thing. And she was the, the senator who uh, basically got rid or, or got the Senate to get rid of uh, Al Franken for that one picture he took where oh, he pretended one, to yeah. touch a woman's boobs on a military plane. That was her. And she's, she, for a while there, she was, that's basically all she talked about was Me Too stuff, was about how Trump was a misogynist and he was terrible to women. And it's good to bring focus to women's issues, but she is the most calculated and like the worst person you could possibly send out to do that bidding because it's it's like if trump suddenly decided that he was going to be the chairman of a trans organization or something it's just it doesn't <laughs> add up it feels nefarious and evil and calculated and she is all those yeah. things yeah yeah actually there was just one more thing in terms of points i want to touch on because this one's really fucking terrible uh, so back in 2017, she supported a bill which make it a fucking federal crime of up to 20 years in prison for Americans to support any kind of boycotts against Israel. Yeah. So that's shit. And then after some criticism, as you know, true to her character, she backtracked a little bit and said, um, only companies should be punished for this. And now in 2019, the ultimate side like, oh, fine, we, maybe we shouldn't have this fucking blatant fucking in, infringement of freedom of speech and, you know, the First Amendment and whatever else, you know. Maybe... Uh, but, but I mean, uh, can you... Even can... as you just supported it in the first place, like, two years ago, like, holy shit. Yeah, but I mean, can you blame any American who doesn't trust the electoral system at this point? Obama in 2008, 11 years ago, campaigned on closing Guantanamo within the first 100 years. And the Democrats are still <laughs> campaigning on closing Guantanamo. You mean 100 days, right? Yes. Uh, 100 oh, I, years, I said years. 100 yes. days. Well, 100 whatever, days. I mean, you know. But maybe that's the real. 100 years. In the first 100 years of my Guantanamo. presidency, <laughs> I'm going to close Guantanamo, I promise. Ah, yes. Long term. Dude, all those vision. Republicans have said Obama was the Antichrist, yeah, right? There you go. It's going to live for like 500 years. I'm on a very demanding campaign. I haven't had a lot of sleep these last three weeks. <laughs> uh, that's fair enough. Yeah, uh, do it's I have a... anything else to say? 
Um, well, there's some other examples of her being a complete grifter, but that's, you know, <laughs> already spoke about that. Aside from that, like, yeah, no, not much, uh, not much else here. She's kind she... of, just a final thought for me, she's kind of uh, screwed because the Me Too thing uh, was kind of predicted to be this game-changing political movement, but it really hasn't worked out it's the way that a lot of the bit. activists did. And even even Gillibrand is backing off in her statements of talking about women's issues because it didn't get, it didn't really get the steam that people predicted it would, for better or worse. Yeah. So yeah. she's she's kind of screwed as a candidate, uh, but she was predicted a lot of success in the wake yeah, of Hillary I losing. I don't think she's gonna do well now. No, she's so. she's she's. I, I mean, if she uh, the reason she's still in the race is for publicity at this oh, yeah. point. She's I mean, she, no one in her people. campaign thinks that's she's gonna win. People. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, she could definitely be a president at some point. I mean, if uh, if Kirsten version 3.0 <laughs> turns into someone likable, then oh jeez, well that's that's a horrifying thought. Yeah, because she has proven that she can, you know, talk to Republicans or whatever that's and get true. them to vote for her. But... She can change positions very quickly if she wants to. <laughs> yeah, she's very adept. Yeah, I don't know if that's a strength. Uh it can be. It can be. In an election where no one votes, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because, so yeah, yeah I guess so. that's good a brand for you all. Uh, who should we talk about next? Peter. Okay, I will talk about the cliffhanger candidate that I'm proud oh. of. The Silicon Valley bro. Hmm. Oh, None other guy? than Yang. The Yang gang. Yeah. The Yang gang. Yeah. Yang gang. We're, I'm assuming we're all Yang gang on this podcast. Hell of yeah. course. Yeah. I mean. Of course, Yang. Fuck he's, yeah. Uh, fuck, I mean, he's he's rabble. offering us the fruit. The <laughs> He's offering American citizens the freedom dividend, Ooh, the universal the basic income dividends. of a thousand dollars. Well, yeah, yeah. dude, I want a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. You know how many loot crates <laughs> I could get for a thousand bucks? Oh, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> All the avocado yeah. toast I could eat with it. Fuck yeah. Do you know how much alcohol and tobacco I could buy for that, and oh, then not pay yeah, my rent? That's like a fucking hundred bottles of alcohol I could get. With I that. could get so much dip tobacco. Mmm. <laughs> So yeah, Yang Gang yeah, and yeah. the Universal Basic Income. Uh, does he have anything else yeah. really to his name besides the Universal Silicon Valley? Well, I mean, is there anything else he's you know, come out in support of? Is just literally just a Universal Basic Income. My take on Yang, on the whole Yang Gang thing, is that he is a single issue candidate who realized too late that he kind of needed to have at least an idea on policy in general to run for president. So How the fuck can he be a single issue president? <laughs> That's not how being president works. No, but see Yang, he's he's a Silicon Valley entrepreneur bro, basically. Yeah. That's what he is. And he is a very successful person who went to, you know, he he's one of those computer people who never talk to real people. And he he it comes across <laughs> he was on Joe Rogan's podcast. I've seen some clips of it. And it's really interesting to see because he just, he has no social skills. So Joe Rogan just gets him to agree with basically everything he's saying. So like at one point, he basically turned Yang into an anarcho-capitalist in agreeing like <laughs> that. Maybe the police is bad. And he was like, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, I guess. Yeah, maybe the poli maybe we shouldn't have police. You just go like, what are you doing? Like, what, what's, what are you up to? And that's, that's basically yeah. Yang is, he's this very agreeable guy who who recognized that the interests of silicon valley were being pressured by low wages and no one being able to afford to live in silicon valley and going maybe people won't turn to socialism if we just give them a thousand bucks a month he's this this kind of <laughs> um naive tesla kind of elon musk character yeah, yeah. Oh boy. um yeah he okay so some background on him he founded venture for america which is more or less like a company that does angel investments in small entrepreneurs um it's it's all very technical but it's basically like if you founded a shoe company uh and uh you need someone to invest uh traditionally you you can you know go out and and seek out these people called angel investors who give you a bunch of money to start production on your shoes or whatever uh and it's basically like Something like they give you five million dollars, but then they own thirty percent of your company, like uh, Shark Tank, right? right. That, that's what it is. He he made a yeah. company yeah. that only does that. Essentially, that's how rich he is. Uh, and mm, and yeah. it's uh, 
it's it's still highly successful. He stood down in 2017 when he you know started planning a presidential campaign, I guess. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he he's extremely well off. He doesn't seem to care all that much about whether or not he does well in the presidential campaign. He just likes having people talk about him. And he has <laughs> entirely uh, embraced the meme that he's become. And he, he at his hmm. stump speeches, I've heard rumblings that he will say meme wordings or like use meme language to hype up his supporters of young people who uh, ironically oh, love him. He has this he has this kind of Trumpish energy, but just with no charisma. So it's like if, <laughs> yeah. if Trump didn't have any charisma, but he's still like that's the thing. If he had charisma, he would he would win this election. But he just does not. I mean, look up any clip of him talking, and it's it's like talking to your IT guy, the the IT guy at, at, at any company that you work at, who just knows so much, but just doesn't have the capacity to communicate it and is also probably evil. <laughs> Honestly, I'm relating to this guy, especially the last part, the oh, evil yes. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's endearing, but also uh, he's not a presidential candidate. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. No, uh, don't vote for that guy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, next candidate, who's next? Steve Bollocks. Steve Bollocks. Fuck yeah. So yeah, Steve no. Bollocks. His name is Steve Bullock. No, Steve Bollocks. <laughs> Steve Bullock Bollocks. Steve Bollocks. Yeah, uh, honestly, we might as well skip this candidate. But okay, I'll, I'll... let's move on. <laughs> so I'll my next candidate is. <laughs> I have no idea who Steve uh, Bollock is. Uh, yeah, no, no uh, one is. Does, he, is he officially he running, really or is he? He is officially running. Yes, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> he, is, uh... he is one of the actual declared ones. Okay. He is uh, um, the governor of Montana. No, which yeah, is... that place. Yeah, it's a state that Shout no one really talks about all, ever. Uh, Montana fans. Shout out to all of the 30,000 people that live in Montana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah Montana. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, I don't think he's a member of, uh, what's the, the third way Democrat thing. But he might as but well be. He might, yeah. I mean, okay. I don't think he's as conservative fiscally as, like, uh, John Delaney, hmm. but he's, like, there. You know, he's in that area. Mm. Um, but interestingly, I think the the one thing that's interesting about him, and basically the only thing that I'm going to talk about, and then we're going to move on, uh, he has been recognized and endorsed by uh, the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizers, yeah. the AFL-CIO board, uh, and by the Montana Education Association, Montana Federation of Teachers, for his support of workers' rights and public education. Mm. Well, that's neat. Uh, so he... Uh, He's like a union kind of person. -ish. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to make a little caveat there that the AFL CIO is not a great union. It certainly no, hasn't they, been they historically. Were. One, once upon a time. I don't know, weren't they like, like supporting like fucking right wing dictators in the seventies, basically? Yeah, no, before that, like oh, in the sixties, okay. fifties. <laughs> Way back when. Yeah, they they used to be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, no, not so much. But he opposes century, uh, yeah. right to work legislation. Well, that's uh, and um, uh, some like public education. Well, just real quick for those of me, right to work legislation that allows people to more or less be uh, like have the union work for them in terms of like negotiating contracts, but not having to pay them for that work, which you yeah. is doing for them. So just, you receive uh, all the benefits of being in a union without being in the union. Yeah. You which don't even have to pay for the purpose of, of unions. Yeah, exactly. Like you can, there are. Uh, constructs where you don't have to be a part of you and you have to pay them like a fee because they are doing all the negotiating on your behalf it's an agency fee this yeah. right to work thing gets rid of that so mm -hmm. just a bit of background there on what the fuck right to work legislation is yeah because it sounds uh, cool teachers it's uh, not cool. or at, at least teachers in montana seem to like him because he promotes public education wow well, good uh, for him that's uh yeah that's it Okay. Well, that's really okay. all that's interesting about him. That's it's cool. all, all the standard cookie cutter Democrat bullshit. Same sex marriage, immigration, abortion, women's rights, people, uh, the uh, black people. I don't know. You know, it's, it's right. just progressive. All the virtue signaling stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that a Democratic presidential candidate needs to talk exactly. about. Exactly. He's in there. Yeah. yeah, it's only not working when they don't do it, basically. Everything yeah. they have to support <laughs> on paper, they will yeah. say they support. Yeah. Yes. 
It doesn't even say anything about it. It's just like, yeah, he's pro-choice. And that's about all it says on okay. his abortion. <laughs> it's just like, okay. all right. So he's very passionately right. for women's rights, as you can yep. tell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck oh, yeah, yeah. women's rights. Definitely. Uh, sure, abortion. He tweeted once, yeah, like, women, women are humans. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking radical. Jesus. Yeah. Well, that's, that's about the extent of how progressive he is. I mean, well. this, this, what can, yeah, I mean, he is, <laughs> no offense, Montana, but like, he's from Montana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of his uh, finances, not that I want to bore you, Peter, but... <laughs> no, uh, bore me, bore me, I'm interested. He has received, it seems, yeah, millions of dollars. Huh. And huh. no one knows from where. Nefarious. Mm. So, uh, <clears throat> he has received money from unknown states. Ooh. Uh, Unitemized, non, uh, unitemized. It says unitemized numerous times. Unitemized donations, uh, uncoded sectors and uncoded industries, like millions upon millions of dollars. I just came up with the best story from wh for where that money money came from. Okay, so oh, tell us after the 2016 election and America going crazy for you know this this conspiracy theory that uh, Putin more or less got Trump elected. Putin sat in, in the Kremlin one day reading the newspaper and going, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should pick <laughs> someone and give them a bunch of money <laughs> and make them president. <laughs> and he, he, he yeah. talked to his, uh, his intern, who is also an American spy who came from Montana, and said, you there, boy, get over here. And he said, which Democrat should, do you know, that I should support for president, who is a Democrat, to disrupt the American electoral system and, and secure Russian supremacy. And the Montana oh. boy said, well, there is this guy in, in my state. And Putin said, great, give him millions of dollars and we will make him president. <laughs> and P Putin is putting on a brave face right now. Like if you, if you bet on, a, on a, the wrong Doubling horse down. of the track. <laughs> you don't want to admit that you were wrong, so you double down. Yeah, just just don't 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 reveal the poker face and just pretend you never gave yeah. anyone money at all. Yeah, yeah. And if it all backfires, just pretend that was your plan all along. It's sixty chess you're playing here. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So under uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, second to the uh, anonymous, uh, uncoded, and unitemized donations that he's received. Uh, he's also received a whole fuck ton of money from lobbyists. Hmm. So that always looks good on your record it is when does. you take money from them. Hmm. Indeed. It's why we are very open to lobbyist money on this program, by the way. Oh, yeah. If any I mean, lobbyists if you are bribe listening, us, go ahead. <laughs> yes, I mean, Raytheon is the fucking best company, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. I love yeah. Raytheon. Maybe. Uh, reach out to us. And we will reveal whether or not we think they're a fantastic Have you company. all ever heard of Monsanto's Roundup? Isn't it delicious? <laughs> British Petroleum. <laughs> <laughs> From sea to shiny sea, it gets you everywhere. <laughs> it's Europe. Yeah. You know. yeah, well, you know. So, yeah. well, Locally was... sourced. <laughs> <laughs> Organic. That's organic. <laughs> Gluten-free. Yeah. Gluten, they are, well, sure. I guess, yeah, sure. Yeah, probably. It's, it's not vegan. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I get uh, most of most uh, of it comes oil. from like, algae and plankton and stuff from like millions of years ago. True. The like, the whole thing that's like oil is uh, dead dinosaurs is a myth. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, hey, sweet. It's all vegan then. Vegan oil, fuck yeah. yeah. Mostly vegan. Nice. <laughs> I mean, there could be some dinosaurs in there. Okay, well, you know, I guess, you can't have hypothetically. Everything. Fine, vegetarian oil. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think dinosaurs are vegetarian. <laughs> Whatever. But, uh, moving on. Yeah. Right, so, um, let's see. Yes, yeah, so, the, the person I was going to discuss last time, but uh, we didn't get around to, Kamala Harris, oh. the senator and Ooh. former attorney general of California. She is garbage. <laughs> We're covering her on this episode? <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. I know. And she's pretty shit. Like most yeah. of the people. So that's, guess why we're drinking, people. So Kamala Harris. Um, <laughs> she has 
Maybe he sort of jumped on board with Bernie's Medicare for All plan, but also kind of not because there's still room for a bunch of other stuff, which don't make sense. But yeah, now standard politician yeah. stuff. Um, He's also like one of the few people who, like one of the few Democrats who has been critical of the Green New Deal. Really? Oh, there's Damn, been a few. Yeah. There's been a few who've, who've run that I've also covered, yeah. but yeah. I think she's like the most... The prominent uh, one, yeah. Before the most uh, prominent yeah. one, yeah. No, I didn't come across that, but uh, to be fair, she... I mean, I was giving Pete Buttigieg a lot of shit last episode, but uh, I mean, Buttigieg at least had like a fucking page on his website with, you know, positions. Harris doesn't. <laughs> Harris is fuck all. Yeah. Harris just asks, I'm Harris, and here's a donate page. You want to donate? <laughs> I'm Harris. Uh, that's about it i'm kamala and i smoked this. weed in high school listening Ooh, to artists yeah. who released songs yeah. years after i went i came out of high school whoa i also if you look on, um, prosecuting on her page drug offenders, so. hmm. if you look on her page on vote smart all of her positions are unknown almost yeah yeah exactly and i feel like it's she's, a very she's little pro-choice a, little, a few positions are filled in yeah a lot of them are unknown but at least she has a bit of a record as an attorney general and it's shit so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's some of the standard stuff in terms of, uh, like, what I could find of uh, some, uh, yeah, it is sort of signed up with some of Bernie's things, uh, sports paying teachers and whatnot, some gun control, yada, yada, yada. Nothing really special here. So let's go to Attorney yeah. General's record, because there's some stuff there to talk about, because it's garbage. Um, first of all, she's, she's trying to sort of present herself as having been this you know, progressive attorney general. Yeah, not really. Because uh, as she... Uh, not in any the... way progressive. <laughs> oh, no, no. There's, there's bad things Not there. even there's a little like... bit. No, I can... There's like one thing there which is good, and the rest like, oh, God. Probably evil, too. No, like the one thing which is good, which she did in her position as attorney general, was not defending California's gay marriage ban. So she used her actual discretion as attorney general to not defend that thing. So yay. The rest of the things she does, pretty bad. So that's not the main thing, and that's uh, she supports this program which would which threatens parents uh, with prison time if their kids were uh, didn't go to school uh, enough. If they missed like I don't know so many days of a school year, they would you know possibly go to prison. And again, now, people... In her defense, she, tiny bit. Again, again, sorry. Again, she didn't support legislation that no, said No, she this. created that. She, she came up with that. it. Yes, she created it. Now, somewhat in her defense, no one was actually convicted under that. So there are about 20 people who are put on trial for this every year. Though none of them have been sent to prison. But still, a terrible way of dealing with this to begin with. And just like... like completely stupid and even even if someone did get convicted like how the fuck's that gonna help anyone if like one of the parents is in fucking prison it's the typical it's It's fucking garbage it's the typical california democrat thing of kicking people while they're down yeah exactly Mm. and she's proud of this thing as well it's a terrible fucking thing yeah it's not as bad as some people make it sound it's like no one have been sent to prison it's still terrible she's so proud of it but she wrote a book about it Ah, she wrote a book about how proud she is of it yeah. As a as a teacher, I'm fully in support of sending parents to prison. <laughs> yeah, 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 you are a teacher. Tell, tell us about, what, what do you think of this plan? <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's great. Okay. I mean, parents, well, I take the parents back. of your students are the worst part of being a teacher because they're. That is fair. I hate them. That is fair. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> like, what do you do? You, you think this one is anyway good? <laughs> Otherwise, aside um, from keeping you away if you from parents. you want a student to to come to school. Sending their parents to jail is not going to make them more motivated to really? uh, get educated. Huh. Well, that is interesting. But is that I mean, a bad they're going to have to, like, figure out, like, where are they going to live? Like, where are they, like... Prison. Yeah. Like, and... They do have to deal with the their parents yeah. being in prison. Mm-hmm. That's a traumatic thing. I don't think they're going to, like, if they even do decide to go to school, I don't think they're going to perform very well, knowing that their parents are in prison. No, but that fixes itself, because then they just go to prison. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then there'll be a family reunion in prison. Okay, now, in case, for some reason, we have a Kamala Harris fan listening to this, and he's going to get very angry, send us a bunch of angry emails. Okay, so no one did go to prison. 
But still, there's a lot of fucking people who do have to go through this fucking bullshit criminal process now. And that's... Yeah. Like, even if they don't end up in prison, that's still going to take massive amounts of time and cause a lot of stress and other issues to these families. And that's not helpful. <laughs> it's just a terrible policy. America in general is just such a fan of punishing oh, yeah. people, even when it's not constructive or leads to any kind of, like, positive consequences. Yeah. Like, just punish. Just punish, punish, punish. Like, never help people. Like, oh... You committed a crime because you're poor and you can't afford food. Instead of giving you money so that you can live without committing crime, we're going to send you to prison uh. where you're going to spend, you know, 10 years of your life, not learn anything, and in fact probably become a more dangerous individual from your time in there. Then we'll let you out and you will keep committing crimes <laughs> and you will keep being poor and then we'll scoop you up and throw you in prison again. Yeah. Hey, free uh, yeah. labor. Free yeah. labor. That's prison true. labor. No, yeah. no, Harris is absolute garbage. And there's a few more things here, which one of them is particularly gross, but I'll leave that to the end here. Um, so the other thing she has done is, okay, she supports some uh, police bias trainings, but opposed like measures which actually have the police be accountable, such as body cameras or independent investigations into police <laughs> shootings. Can't have that. Um... No, can't have fucking the police shoot someone. Don't want an independent investigator looking into that. Oh, no, 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 no. She's opposed to that. Just have the police themselves investigate their own shootings. Yeah, yeah, that's not They'll a problem. They'll be like, yeah, no, he had a gun. Keep yeah, it in so, the family. Yeah. And uh, now here's sure. another thing which I find. She loves the unions. Ah, <laughs> uh, does she? I don't know. There's nothing on her fucking record. She loves the police so. She loves the oh, police Yeah, union. the police unions. <laughs> yeah, the those are the unions, unions. she likes. Yeah, there uh, is one. So she also, uh, in terms of LGBT rights, which she says she's really in favor of, she has defended um, like blocks to transgender inmates getting uh, sexual reassignment surgery. And she said that I, I have to do that in my position as yada yada. But as we saw earlier, she didn't defend the fucking gay marriage ban. I mean... Like, that was, she used the discretion on that thing. She could have used discretion in this case to, like, say, like, hey, I'm not going to defend this fucking uh, block because it's fucking garbage. Nah, she didn't do that. She went out of her way to fucking support this. And when asked later on, like, hey, okay, so that's years ago. What do you think now? Should states maybe pay for sexual reassignment surgery of transgender inmates? She was like, well, we shouldn't stigmatize them. Hmm. You know what's missing here? A fucking answer to the question. <laughs> yeah. There's no answer to the question here. Like, do you support this? Well, I think we should not be evil. Okay. Yeah. Do you support gay marriage? Well, I think we shouldn't uh, be gay stigmatizing people are gay very people. nice. Yes. People so... shouldn't kill gay people. Is my opinion on whether or not they should be allowed yeah. to get married. <laughs> it's like, thank yeah. you for not answering the question. <laughs> That's whatsoever. not a question answer at all to the question. Like, what the fuck? Okay, but here's like the it's worst. It's barely thing. even related to the question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it is. It's fucking. What? Anyway, so the worst thing, in my opinion, on the record is like there were all these cases in Canada. There was a big scandal where, um, like one of the uh, police lamps, they were tampering with evidence. They were making up reports and said, like, these people were, you know, drunk or high or whatever even when it wasn't the case. And it was later to find out, like, hundreds of convictions were based on, like, these reports that these people were, like, under influence when they weren't. And she thought to uphold all these, like, convictions based on wrongful evidence. And on top of that, also supported cases where, like, the there was a conviction, but the prosecution didn't uh, give exculpatory evidence. Now, if you've been watching your legal eagle like I told you to do, you would know that if the prosecution has evidence that the defendant is in fact not guilty, they have to hand it over. Didn't happen. She fought to uphold, uphold those convictions. That's very illegal. <laughs> very unconstitutional. She fought to uphold that. She's fucking garbage. <laughs> She really should have been watching some legal. Yeah, legal. exactly. Go SMH. check out Legal Legal. It's uh, it's good, fucking good channel. I feel bad for Kamala Harris, though. All in all, uh, I feel bad why? for her. She was, <laughs> why? she was anointed the Yaz Queen of this election <laughs> by the the neolibs. Oh yeah. She, and then Klobuchar came along. <laughs> no, I mean she was legitimately the new Hillary. No, and that's people, true. And that's people very thought, true. And people in 
all yeah. like uh, chains of command within the Democratic Party were putting everything behind Kamala, despite her being intensely unlikable, despite her being intensely <laughs> awful, and her record just being yeah. the worst Garbage. possible Garbage. record you could have. Um, yeah, there's one good thing in there. One. That's it. That's barely a good thing. I mean, that's yeah, even the like, fucking guy from Montana would have done the same thing. Yeah, um, that's what, what I'm I mean. saying is, <laughs> then like... then Biden comes along. Old man Grabby Pants comes into the race, <laughs> <laughs> and what happens? Yeah, Kamala is is Entire yesterday's Trump, news. Uh, She's yep. yeah. all tomorrow's parties. She's gone. Now, yeah. no one talks about Kamala. She's dropping rapidly in the polls, and she's no longer the Yaz queen. We, had, we no longer have a Yaz queen this election. We have, an old, we have two old dudes fighting it out. I mean, how could, how could Twitter and Tumblr live with themselves if it just <laughs> came down to Biden oh, and Sanders? No. Oh, yeah, I just yeah. remembered something. Uh, I don't think Kamala has, I don't think in general, has like any idea what fucking policy she's supporting. And there's one case where I specifically noticed that because... Um, she says she wants to decriminalize sex work. I'm convinced she has no idea what the fuck that means because what she's describing and what she actually wants is the Nordic model, which is something very different to decriminalization. And on top of that, she supported things which would further criminalize sex work as well. So it's, what the fuck are you talking about? You'd There's think as a lawyer, she here. would have this shit down. <laughs> She would yeah, have this you'd section think so. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, she, she, she says she supports one thing, has supported a different thing, and what she's advocating for is a completely different thing. So, I mean, that's a pattern here with her. So, these people yeah. are all awful. Why are we talking about all these awful people? <laughs> oh, yeah, let, let's, move, let's move on to the next <laughs> candidate. Maybe the next one is somewhat better. I can do a quick one yeah. if, we're, if we're running out of time. Actually, yeah, we're already on an hour. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> we discussed four people. This is a fun one. Jay Inslee. Remember Jay Inslee? Jay Inslee. Ah, I, I no. remember his really annoying campaign logo, which will give princes everywhere a heart attack. We, I mean, I, I just have to say one word, or yeah, two words maybe, uh, mm -hmm. and then we will all know what we're talking about. Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Oh. It's Drew Carey guy from the streams. Yes. The guy. Yeah, who, the guy who looks like Drew Carey. Yeah, Drew Carey. I remember him. Yeah, oh. climate change guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh yeah. He's the guy who was, he was like really unpopular, or like not unpopular, just unnoticeable. He was unno. He that's his big thing is he is um, he's he he blends in with the crowd too much. He's extremely dry and very yeah. academic in what, but he's the green candidate essentially, and no yeah, one. Yeah, like the, the one thing he talks about is the environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this dude loves alternative energy. If there's he he but he only <laughs> cares about it. If you ask him about anything, he will turn the conversation towards green energy, alternative energy, uh, saving the planet, all that stuff. He he refuses oh. to talk about <laughs> basically anything else. Uh, from what I've gathered, anyway, he he's uh he's kind of like if you sent uh what I imagine the stereotypical Norwegian politician to America, no. running for president. That's what I would imagine <laughs> that would look like. Like this very privileged, very handsome looking. Very well put together, oil funded, crazy person, essentially. <laughs> uh, kind of left wing, I guess, but like also in a digestible way. Uh, yeah, he's been the governor yeah. of uh, the state of Washington since 2013. And uh, he, he's, he's kind of all over the place. He, he was the guy who, he actually did a very uh, honorable thing, I think. He was the guy who got Trump's executive order 1376-9 blocked which was the infamous one where uh, Trump tried to block Muslim-majority countries from entering the country when he first won oh, the election. Okay. So he was the guy who led the fight to have that um, executive order blocked successfully. Um, so that was, that was a, a very, you know, well-executed rebuff yeah, of, that's, of Trump. That's nice. Yeah. That's good. I mean, any little thing you can get on these people. Um, and um, <laughs> in Congress, he, before he became governor, he was a member of the New Democrat Coalition, which is the Bill mm -hmm. Clinton coalition, yeah. which is the very centrist, very fiscally conservative grouping in Congress. Third way, moderate Democrats. Yeah, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, the whole deal. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and from what I've gathered, from the articles I've read and stuff, he was kind of hoping for that kind of Bill Energy, uh, Bill Energy, Bill Clinton energy, <laughs> um, when, from before our time, in 1992 or 1991 at the time, 
when Bill Clinton entered the race, he was kind of an Inslee type character because he was the governor of Arkansas. Like it's like Montana, you know. It's like who, yeah. who cares? It's like what? Yeah. Sorry, which one? Which fucking square is that? Uh, um, Jay Inslee. Well, one of the ones above Texas, I think. <laughs> oh, That's all of them. <laughs> See, you said exactly. square, and I thought you meant Jay Inslee. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. He is a square. Yeah, where where is he? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he was. He's. I. I mean, he's kind of hoping for that kind of the guy who comes out of nowhere and steals the whole thing. Energy. Uh, he was hoping, but the thing is, he. I mean, he could have asked anyone. He's not charismatic. He is extremely boring, yeah. extremely dry. He's very Scandinavian in like if he ran in, I imagine Sweden or Norway or Finland or Denmark or the Netherlands, he would be like a mildly popular candidate. But he's he's talking to he, it's like he's talking to us, like an international audience, saying like, wouldn't it be great if America just suddenly decided to go one hundred percent alternative energy by twenty twenty five, and we all clap and go hell yeah. But then people in Texas are like, that sounds terrifying because like, yeah, but like, but, but that's, that's also like, he, I mean, how, how <laughs> he has like, someone did the math and it's like $9 trillion his plan costs. And I'm I mean, down, I'm down spending $9 trillion on this. Exactly. I mean, honestly, I mean, we're down. $9 trillion sounds like a lot. But compared to like U.S. defense spending. Yeah, that's like what. Hell yeah. Is. No, I am, I'm complete, yeah. but I'm just saying like. He 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 needs a, if he was to be a serious candidate, he would need to kind of like have a comprehensive plan for what he would do. He can't just run and go nine trillion for the climate, please, and then not yeah. say where he's going to yeah. get the nine trillion. He's a channel some more of that war and energy with policy proposal after policy proposal. He, kind of, yeah, I guess, but also like he could be prime minister of Sweden. Though. I'm just gonna <laughs> put probably, that yeah, like probably. he, like he might as well be our prime minister because our prime minister is also like that. He's very mild, fucking slightly progressive, like environmentalist guy. He's just like sort of, yeah, just unnoticeable. Just like yeah, he's he's there. Yeah, exactly. That's his special. energy. He's just there. He smiles a <laughs> yeah. lot. He looks nice. Old women probably love him. They want to shake his hand. Yeah, yeah. That kind yeah. of thing. That's his energy. And I, again, I think he might be running for prime minister in Sweden. <laughs> Just based off what he's saying. Dude, he could be. Yeah. Yeah. Social, next social democratic uh, party leader. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I have on Inslee. And, yeah, um, fair enough. That's probably more than anyone has on Insty, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the most, it's the most anyone has ever talked about. Yeah, him. probably. We're, we're giving these people, right now. We're giving all these no-names bumps just from you know people finally hearing about just them existing. Oh, go yeah. to his Paul if Warren. if you want to know more about Drew Carey in politician shape, <laughs> go to his uh, Twitter profile, and everything he tweets is about the climate. Just reading off the top, climate change puts us in great peril. Is the number one mm -hmm. right now. The, the last True. one a couple of hours ago. Climate change is personal. It's destroying our homes, harassing our communities, and hurting our livelihoods. Yeah, and sure. The True. next one a couple of hours before that. Clean energy jobs are already putting people to work. So he is. That's generally how a job works, yes. Yeah, he. that's yeah. all he talks about. And that's his, his whole shtick. And well, you know, I, as a shtick, I... <laughs> I'm not too uh, opposed to that being a shtick. Just, um, <clears throat> sorry, just on that whole climate change or like green jobs put pe puts people to work like when people in like texas say we are afraid of alternative energy because a lot of people are going to be out of work mm. like being like a fucking solar panel engineer is not an alternative for a coal miner it really isn't no like you can't close a coal mine and expect all the workers in that coal mine to get a degree in engineering and work on solar farms. Right, exactly. Yeah, That's not how that. jobs work. Exactly. That's the yeah. ultimate, like, neoliberal fantasy, is this idea that, oh, with this all, all this new technology, we'll just re-educate people to become engineers. And you just have all these 50-year-old like, people like, with no education. Like a a multi-year project, a lot of people are like, also, how are these people going to, like, feed their families and, like, pay their rents? Like, how is that going to happen? Yeah. Like, 
they would need first of all they would need tuition free college and they would need like a student allowance like we have yeah, in Scandinavia. They, they need to have like, like families taken care of during that time. Yeah. It's like how but do you even exactly then, see this happening? I mean we kind of have that here and even then it's a tiny amount of people who actually take up uh the government on yeah. the offer to do it because it's still yeah. not as much money as you'd make if you just work a minimum wage job. So I mean yeah. Yeah, and no, if absolutely. you have a family and a home and a mortgage and a car, then it's it's just it's not really feasible. And you, like no. any any way you twist and turn it, you will end up with a large pocket of people in Texas and in Arizona and all the oil states who are suddenly out of work. Yeah, or well, the coal states, fucking Virginia. That's yeah, good. yeah, absolutely, yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I think that's all of the candidates that we have time for in this episode. Yeah, yeah probably. So tune We're gonna in. Have to save uh, the dream, the dream guy, Cory Booker, for next episode. Yeah. Um, fucking we also boy. have uh, Hickenlooper on my side and Klobuchar. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I still have like four people left here, so. Jesus, Jesus this yeah. is turning into a four part. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Jesus fuck. <laughs> oh god. I, I mean, okay, fine. I guess this can be off stream for a moment, but uh, I think we're just gonna have to dedicate like one entire episode to Warren uh, Sanders and uh, but not uh, Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so, I think so. <laughs> at this rate, we're just not gonna have time. But that's good. Then we we the closer we get to the election, the better, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Then we get more stories. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, that's been that's been fun. I'm I'm gonna have another drink now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank, right. Thanks for listening, dear listener. Thanks for listening, uh, everyone. S- send uh, us an email about any of these candidates. Have you heard of them before? If so, <laughs> yeah. what did you send think? Send us an email if you've heard of any of these people. Yeah. Hoodie. Have we swung you to vote for <laughs> Gillibrand or Harris or uh, <laughs> Andrew Steve Yang. Bollocks? Yes. Are Yang you, Yang. Are you a Yang ganger? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, who do you think will drop out first? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Who, who, will, who will drop out first? Yeah. Answer us in the comments down below. Yeah. We'll drop out first. Well, we can speculate that about in the final episode. That's true. Yeah. So, until that time, dear listener. First of all, before we end oh, the episode. Okay. Uh, never mind. Come back, dear listener. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come back. Hang on. Comrades. Sorry, can't leave just yeah, yet. Yeah, don't, don't touch the dial just yet. Uh, hang on. This episode of Shit Highland is brought to you. By our patrons over on patreon.com forward slash as your scapegoat. Thank you to Joshua Cheeseman, Yen Chang Ming, and M Lim for their yep. uh, months long support at this point. Thanks a lot. Podcast. Yeah, unfortunately, Blue Apron still isn't uh, sponsoring this particular podcast, but some of us yeah. here are still holding out hope. Peter still isn't, but you know, we'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and um, uh, shout out to Cheeseman, who's thinking of moving to Denmark. Oh well, oh. look at that! So that would be we could hang out if we yeah. If we, hey, you can fun. you can come on like an episode. You know, can be a special guest. Yeah, uh, I think Cheeseman has a Danish girlfriend. Hey, I could be wrong. Sorry, Josh, that. if I'm if I'm wrong. But Denmark I, has girls there. Fucking hell, you learn something new every day. There are females in Denmark. Obviously, Cheeseman, if you want to come on the podcast. Yeah, no, if, if you're in the neighborhood, do a live thing. Come on, it's going to be great. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Cheeseman is an active member on our Discord server, the Asher Escape yes. Discord server. And if, if you, didn't you know, too would like to become have one. an active member of our Discord server, then uh, cl- click the link. Free. <laughs> yeah, it's free. <laughs> it's in the description. It's, it's free. You don't can have just to join. be a patron. Ah, if you are a patron, yeah. you can get a shiny patron tag. So, uh, yes. something to consider. <laughs> Get it before your friends. Pe- people will look up to you and respect you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, the Discord has over 700 members, uh, which is cool. Yep. So uh, join it. Yeah. Why don't you? We're all there. All three of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're all pretty active. Yeah, if you want to hang out more of us and talk more about fucking Kamala Harris and uh, <laughs> John Hickenlooper... <laughs> Come join! Oh yeah, definitely. We're definitely gonna have a long oh, discussion yeah, no, about I, I, Hick and Looper. I'd Hick and love loops. to talk more Hick and Looper. <laughs> Hick and Looper. Can't, loop gang. Just can't get enough Hick and Looper. I mean, always yeah. need more Hick and Looper in my life. Hick and Looper, bro. Just like saying his name. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> and <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah. We'll be enjoying our extra drinks now. <laughs> yeah. Join us next time. Join us and next time. Don't forget to vote Hickenlooper. Indeed, vote Hickenlooper.